Now, fallen ex-New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet is caught up, or his family's caught up, in a scandal after ICAC, and that's the corruption body in New South Wales, raided the homes of his brother and at least five other Liberal Party members. This is in response to allegations that they helped secure lucrative council projects for Sydney property developer Jean Nassif, so that they that they appointed, or this is what they're accused of doing, uh, and they strongly deny it, but that they helped appoint councillors to the local council who would pass decisions favourably for this developer. Uh, again, they strongly deny it. Joining me now is the Australian's, well, the Australian's former legal affairs contributor, Chris Merritt. Chris, great to see you. What do you think about these allegations? We've both been critical of ICAC in the past. Uh, Dominic Perrottet himself referred the claims made against his brothers to the state's corruption watchdog. So do you think there is a serious issue here? Um, do you think that the agency waited until after the New South Wales election as well to conduct these raids on the, Premier's, the former Premier's own brother? Look, that's a possibility. But Shari will be surprised to hear this. But... I'm really glad that this is going to ICAC. Uh, there's been a, a, a very ineffective parliamentary inquiry, a, a brief look at this. They weren't able to get uh, relevant witnesses to come and give evidence. Some witnesses, Mr Nassif, um, for example, is in Lebanon. There's uh, uh, the, the Liberal Party is supposed to be having a look at this. The police are sniffing around at the edge of it. I think this is exactly the sort of thing that needs to go to ICAC. The parliamentary inquiry, by the way, was uh, chaired by a, a Green Member of Parliament, who I feel sure did a terrific job, but just for the sake of appearances, it's best to try and take this sort of thing out of the political forum and hand it over to ICAC, and we can only hope that ICAC does a fair job of this. So this will be a bit of a test for ICAC. I'd be worried if they get to the point where they suspect that criminal matters are present, that there might be a possibility of criminal matters. If they get to that point and then continue, I think that would be a problem. I, I don't think that there's a role for ICAC in pursuing criminal matters once they have assembled sufficient evidence to justify a, a possibility of criminal proceedings. That should be handed over to the proper authorities, the DPP. Yeah. I wonder if they're looking at both sides on this because, you know, there have been suggestions for a very long time uh, that, that, that both sides of the Liberal Party factions, that both sides of politics uh, in some ways influence whether a DA is passed for developers. And that's, of course, the reason behind the ban on developer donations uh, in New South Wales. Now, I want to turn to The Voice, Chris. You've been covering uh, this issue at length um, in your columns for The Australian. We saw that Liberal MP Julian Lisa resigned. There are now reports that this could have a domino effect on other Liberals who support the Indigenous Voice to Parliament and say that they can't remain uh, on the front bench or even as part of the party. What do you think? Do you think that the rebel group of Liberals, if they do run a yes campaign, as has been reported in the Herald, do you think this is going to have a lot of support, support from Liberal voters or do you think Liberal voters overwhelmingly are backing the no case? Look, I, I think uh, my personal view is that I would expect that most Liberal voters, in fact all voters, not just Liberal voters, would look at the facts of this. And the, the inquiry that we've got going now at the moment has... One of the key things that's come to light is a, a big divergence in opinion on the yes side. There's some uh, proponents of, of, uh, of The Voice who say that The Voice will be able to reach into all parts of the executive and others say, well, Parliament can stop that. Now, that's coming from the yes side. Now, if there's a difference of opinion on such an important matter, that tells me that there needs to be an adjustment to the wording to, to remove that uncertainty. Otherwise, it's, it's inevitable that it'll go to the High Court and the High Court will make a decision. Far better to have it made now by the committee and then by the parliament or by the government, because that's, that's the organisation that's going to be uh, putting this to the people. The, however, the big, the big issue, the really mm. big issue, had, we haven't really touched this. This is the, the, the scope of this organisation's jurisdiction, proposed jurisdiction. 
it would be able to, this, this is the subject matter that it'd be able to deal with. This goes way beyond matters that relate only to Indigenous people. It could cover everything. That needs to be refined as well. Although, although of course, uh, we've seen uh, Linda Burney and Albanese deny that, but, but that is going to be a big issue. Which matters does the voice apply to? Chris Merritt, thank you very much for joining me.